<laughs> this is Digital Painting Tips and Tricks, and I'll be your moderator for today. My name is Jamie. Uh, I use he, they pronouns. And um, if it's not too much trouble, would everyone like to go around and introduce themselves, starting with Monica? Hey there, I'm Monica Marrier. I use she, they pronouns. And I am the lead writer and artist for Tangent Artists, where we have two comics, uh, Skeleton Crew, sort of a horror comedy, and Crit, which is more of a comedy based off of Dungeons and Dragons and sword and sorcery tropes. Oh. All right. Hi, yeah, I'm, Laura. I'm Laura Blake. Um, I'm an illustrator, and you can find my stuff at laurenblakeart.com. Uh, this cat behind me is Kierden, and apparently he will also be joining us. And Shipwrecked? Yes, you got Yay! it. Just, oh, see if you can guess um, the kitten in the back. His name is Elway. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, so I, that, that's us. Moving on. Sorry. Right. Heather, please, uh, would Hi. you like to introduce yeah. us? Yeah. Heather, I use a she, her pronoun. Um, I have a degree in illustration. Uh, I've been drawing most of my life. And I have um, two web comics up right now. Uh, if you look for H.A. Camp on Webtoons, it, they're both on Canvas, but uh, they are both there. And you can find them. And one of them is kind of a Sunday comic very dry humor because that's my humor and the other one is a uh, heartwarming one about a girl learning to get over her um past mistakes well not mistakes uh the mistakes that were done to her the, her past abuse basically she's getting over her past abuse with the help of a demon king because why not <laughs> so um yeah it's a short story it's just by chapters long but uh it was something that I, I really enjoyed doing other than that i have had my um illustrations published in some children's books um one of them is called the magic blanket quilt um so uh yeah that's where i'm coming from you guys are Sorry about the, uh, strange <laughs> stuff behind me but this is the best place to be <laughs> really cool all right thank you everyone for introducing uh, for introducing themselves. So uh, to start off, I would like to um, explain, uh, elaborate on how the panel will be structured as well as the panel procedures that I will set in place. So we'll roughly do our intros and then our like talk about art theory and then uh, phys uh, digital art tools like art programs and then physical art tools like tablets or you know other compression guards or whatnot and then industry talk, and then we open it to the audience. And the, uh, so for panel procedure, I would like to encourage this panel to be an open discussion where panels can casually address each other's points of interest as well, you know, how you do in a normal conversation, but we don't want to rudely cut people off. So if we ever want to um, address another panelist or something like that, we can perhaps raise our hand and say like, may I interrupt or may I add on? Like, that's really cool. Can I just say something? You know, kind of thing. So yeah, or you can interrupt if a panelist is saying something inappropriate. So in which case, if some, uh, if a panelist ask an inappropriate question, you can say, I would rather you not answer that. I would rather you not ask me that. And maybe even, uh, maybe tell me why, or you, you can choose not to, then I will, you know, cease or and then I will stop. And for everyone else, this applies as well. So does everyone, uh, is that clear for everyone? Yep. All right, yes. cool. Let's get started. Digital painting tips and tricks. So first I would like to start out. Um, I think everyone sort of answered this question already, but let me just recap, uh, starting with Heather, how did you get your start in art at first? Um, well, I really started when I was in high school. Okay. No. I started when I was in second grade <laughs> and my parents got me art lessons with a local teacher and she was great. Uh, she would just walk me through everything. And I really learned to love art, but I didn't really take it seriously until my, my high school year, my uh, senior year in high school. 
Um, then when I went into college, I took a bunch of art classes and then I was going to be a art and music composition major. <laughs> you can't sell your soul twice. <laughs> it doesn't work. <laughs> I mean, there are not enough hours in the day to do both of those at the same time if you want to do them correctly. So I found that I was loving my art classes and dreading my music classes. And I figured that was the writing on the wall. <laughs> so um, I, I took the art classes from a really, really great teacher who, when I ended up with some pretty bad depression later on um, that year, um, he was really understanding and really helpful and is a lot of the reason why I'm still here. So, yeah. Yeah. All right. That's really interesting. Monica, you you mentioned that you were also in a similar position. Could you add Yeah, I was to that? I was going to go in from um, music performance and music composition. I've been writing music since I was 9 years old. Um I'd had like I'd won several competitions for it and I was totally like going to write soundtracks like Hans Zimmer or something like that. And then I realized that um I uh, have trouble dealing with musicians. <laughs> They're, they're rather right. a high strung bunch mm -hmm. and um, generally I was just sort of feeling anxious and overwhelmed all the time. And, um, you know, I was kind of looking, like I said, I was looking more forward to my art classes where everybody looks around and goes, well, that's cool. <laughs> well, that's cool. <laughs> that's cool. <laughs> you know, so I just felt more at home. So I went in there for animation uh, and then I left completely unable to do animation, but I had learned some art theory in the meantime time um and uh i just sort of fell into comics because uh storyboarding was my favorite part and so it, it just turned into that the digital painting came later as i learned later how to use all these photoshop tools that were coming out and getting better than ever all so. right that's really cool thank you thank you <laughs> lauren could you uh lauren how did you get your start in art oh uh, or digital uh, art in particular oh, I, I came to it late um I I did art all my life, but I thought I wanted to be a doctor, then got about two months before graduation for pre-med and was like, oh, wait, I hate this. Um, no. so, long story short, it took me a few years to give myself permission to pursue art as a profession because, um, I don't know, that could get more complicated, but I need to give myself permission. Uh, and then I was doing art on my own thinking about fine art, but something about it didn't hit right. And then I stumbled onto uh, an art program called Smart School, um, mm -hmm. found at smarterartschool.com. And I took a class with Dan Dos Santos and I saw what he was doing and I was like, oh, that, I want to do that. So um, between that and going back to an atelier program so that I can get my uh, fundamentals in order, um that's where the ball kept rolling and here i am now <laughs> all right that is really interesting um similar story to like the reverse story of my brother he had art experience and then gave it up and then he's a doctor now so that's cool uh, yeah <laughs> a lot of crossovers if i i found out <laughs> mm, all right so um, then mine, let's get, get get the ball rolling on some art theory questions relating to digital painting for starters, um, what are some of your artistic inspirations from old to modern influences? Maybe we can start with Heather. I mean, yeah, Heather, yeah. That's me, yeah. That's me. I don't, yeah, I, I will answer to H.A. or Heather. That's fine. All right, um, all right. My favorite classic painter is a man called Ong. I-N-G-R-E-S is how you spell his name. He's French. Um, he... Uh, if you look him up, uh, he is almost photorealistic. He was kind of like photorealistic before it was cool. <laughs> um, he painted Napoleon and um, a lot of the noble classes around the time periods. And he was amazing. His color theory was just spot on. I mean, I, I love da Vinci. I mean, you know, all of the old greats, they are, they all have so much that really just gave to the community, to, to art in general. But I, I almost feel like it just 
kind of peaked when it hit on because he was just incredible. Um, but when it comes to art today, I oh, there are so many. <laughs> How am I supposed to choose one <laughs> or two or ten? What is the one? What is the one that is immediately in your mind right now? Like the okay, piece of art. There's a webcomic called Siren's Lament. I love and that one. Art... Oh, so good. It's so oh, good. No. Okay. <laughs> I just the art in there is just phenomenal. It is so amazing. Um, I mean, there there are some others. There's another one that I'm reading called Elix Seed that I also really love. They're phenomenal with their backgrounds and everything. And it's just those are the two that really stand out to me right now um, that I really love. And there's also uh, Hello Baby on DeviantArt. Um, she does some really amazing things that I just look at and go, how do you have the time and patience? So yeah. there are mine. Yeah. I'm actually looking them up right now. And I have to say, I mean, I, I myself really like it. How about, hmm. All right. Okay. How about uh, oh, I do how have about one you, more? Monica? Sorry. Oh yes. yes. Sorry. Oh, sorry. <laughs> My teacher Ben Sowards. Um, he taught at Southern Utah University, and his work is incredible. So there we go. Now I'm done. That's cool. All right. Okay. Um, so uh, Lauren. Yes. Yeah, sorry. Oh, yeah, no. Go, sorry. go, Lauren. Go yeah, ahead, no. Lauren. Hand. Sorry, <laughs> Lauren. Yeah. Go on. Um, influential people. I really love. Uh, of course. Dan Dos Santos's work, uh, Donato Giancola and David Palumbo. And that would be, sorry, I, I had them up as a list. Yes. Um, oh, if you would like to share your content, actually you I, can. I don't know how. Oh, I should just, uh, you see the you, button at the bottom? Which one? It's like I think the, it's, uh, it's a share. It's just, yeah, there's a share content. Just, oh no, oh, Heather, I'm so sorry. I should have informed you. Oh, okay, sure. I, I feel. Am yeah, I yeah, 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 you can. Yeah, okay. you can. Yeah, 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 yeah. So this is Donato Giancola's work, for an example. He's done a lot of amazing um, Tolkien stuff. Um, that's one of my favorites. It's Gollum, Sam, Wise, and Frodo. Um, oh. Then this is Dan Dos Santos's work. Um, you know, one amazing book covers. Great teacher. Right. Both of them are great teachers. Um, and David Palumbo's work. And I, I love um, both of Dan and Donato's storytelling, of course, and paid application. Uh, but I, I also like David's example of um, the paint application and um, the difference between how beautiful it is, but how dark it can be. Ah, I see. Is oh, that something I, that you strive to achieve in your work? Uh, or like, I would, uh, I would to like achieve? to. I would like to, but this is um, Danny Schwartz. I just love his paint application too and the use of colors. But all right, mm -hmm. that is it. How do I get back? Okay. <laughs> cool. There okay, we then we can move on to Monica. You, you can uh, you can share uh, uh, yeah, uh, well, examples. Yeah, yeah. Let me see. Let me get out here. Uh, there we go. So, um, yeah. oh, go away, bit defender. Okay, there we go. So, uh, I am a big fan of. Well, I grew up looking at the Eurocentric masters and stuff like that, but I always had trouble replicating them because. Even my art teacher was going things like, why you always make it look like cartoon, Monica? It's not cartoon, you know, it's, it's real, you know. Maybe you draw like cartoon, so I, I drew like cartoon. But um, I started getting into the works of uh, Colleen Doran, as you can see here. Um, she, This is like her most recent book cover that she did for uh, Neil Gaiman. New, oh. the, the new fairy tale book there. Yeah. It's, it's, it's very sort of pre-Raphaelite style, very Art Nouveau looking style. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very art nouveau. But and like then Jenny Dolphin, who does, who is a German artist who does a lot of Tolkien art. This is one she did with coffee. My Up here, I think this is uh, was this is this uh, Turin and his sister? I think. From oh Silmarillion. no. I, yeah, I know. <laughs> uh, 
Tell me. Bring the tragedy there. And what another one, um, some of the Japanese masters, like, uh, I can't remember the name of the Thanks. artist, the Sailor Moon, but oh, no, I love Sailor Moon, Moon, but I also love Rumiko Takahashi, and she did a lot of pages with watercolors that I absolutely adore. Um, but yes. yeah, I, I, I was, when I was supposed to be studying art, I was, I was reading Dragon Ball Z and, <laughs> and, and, and Sailor Moon and Pokemon and all those things and, and, and Akira Toriyama and trying to copy their styles. And that's where so a lot of my influences so came from. That and the first had... Tim's Batman series. <laughs> I said Tsukini Kawate Oshokyo. Mm, well, thank you. Yep. Mm -hmm. Beautiful artwork. Amazing. Very 90s oh stuff. <laughs> thank you. 90s thank 90s. you all so much for sharing. Um, Heather, would you like to share? Like, I'm so sorry, but you know, just to round back to you, would you like to share some uh, examples? Of I, what, like, the works I don't right? have anything um, really prepared. If you said you looked them up, if you want to, you're more than welcome to, but honestly, I'm, right. I'm, I'm okay. And I also figure right. I've taken up enough time as it is. We can move on. <laughs> All right. Okay. We can move on. Okay. So, um, some art questions I have here. What advice do you have for artists who see themselves as absolutely hopeless in color theory? Work in Starting value. with Lauren. Yes. <laughs> Work in value. Don't worry about color yet. Work in value. There's, oh, there's, okay. Mm -hmm. um, value is more important than color. If it doesn't work in black and white and gray, it doesn't work at all. Mm, that's that's actually, oh yes, uh, Monica, please. Go I, on. I actually want to, I, I can build on that. There's actually an exercise you can do by turning your screen to grayscale only and just mm. picking colors randomly, but just looking at the values because you'll look at a color when you only see gray. And if you paint mm. a picture, using those gray tones and then flip it to color like 98 percent of the time it'll still look cool but it'll look like some sort of you know salvador dali nightmare colors yeah, but, like it'll, but they'll painting. work they'll be cohesive because you were painting with value not with color I it's see. a really fun a... it's a really fun exercise all right okay oh yes lauren please go on uh, unless Heather had something to say you're, I I can go later. That's fine. You can add on. <laughs> um, as soon as you feel comfortable in values, something that's also good to remember is if your light source is a warm color, then your shadows will likely be cool and yeah. vice versa. And so it gives you at least a direction on where to go. But uh, other than values that uh, I would say work from and observe life first, and that'll send you on a pretty good route. All right. All right. Thank you so much for sharing. Heather, please, would you like to add on? One thing that I would like to say is that if you are painting from life, the color is more drab than you think it is. That's just as a general rule. <laughs> I mean, yes, I I've never really painted, found that when I paint from real life, that anything I'm bringing in is like the brightest, absolute, most intense hue that you could possibly have um mm. so it, it's just one thing to remember of you know you don't have to because sometimes i i remember when i first started really going off into my own colors and my own um drawings and and um without as much reference um i would often look at them and i'd be like i only have like six colors to choose from no 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 i have like several million colors to choose from and it's just like you can honestly find really good colors that aren't really super intense colors so it's just something to keep in mind um i, I wish i would have been told that in my high school days <laughs> you know when i painted with neons anyway so but right. um another thing about it is everybody has color problems I, I have never come across someone who doesn't have a color problem when they first start out or, you know, halfway through their career or, you know, at the end of their career, you know. Yeah, <laughs> it's same. Just, yeah. Exactly. It's just one of those things of sometimes you really just have to go back to the basics and realize these are the kinds of colors, uh, you know, it's like warm, cold, um, 
analogous, you know, all of those kinds of exactly. colors and, and opposing, just pull out your color wheel and just be like, okay, okay, back to the beginning. And you have to go back okay. to the basics. All right. So I would like to add on to, I would like to build off on that question. Um, how would you, or like, how would you go about, like, let's say when you start out with like a completely new piece, right? How would you go about creating a color palette for that piece? Oh yeah. Uh, yes. Lauren. Yeah. Go. Yeah. All right. Uh, I figure before we get into details like that, should we go around and show examples of work we've done to the people paying attention so that they know what, where this oh, device yes. is coming from? Yes, 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 please do. Um, I'll sh share mine first because it's up uh, if I could remember how. Okay. <laughs> okay, this one. Okay. Hi. Uh, Ooh, gorgeous. Thank you. Um, this is some of the work I've done. Um, oh, I can't go back. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, I just built that website recently, so I'm like, Ah, oh, crap. Um, but yeah, this is some of the work I've done. I, I like to work in realism a lot. And this mm -hmm. is a fine example of uh, values. Mm -hmm. That was fun. Uh, mm -hmm. da, da, da. So if I were to paraphrase, you'd say that values are a good way to sort of like, how to say, bring a focal point to the piece because like, you decide where it is dark and you decide where it's like illuminated, that kind of thing. Um, um, yes, but also, uh, stop sharing. Okay. Did I do it? Um, but it's, it's the thing to focus on first that, uh, if the shapes of your values work in black and white, that means that odds are it'll end up working in color. Um, mm. but there is, there is a way to stop what you're doing, put your mode in grayscale as I think Correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah. I think Heather mentioned that. Um, they if you put in grayscale. What? Oh, Monica, sorry. <laughs> I, I didn't say anything. Sorry. <laughs> oh, um, but whoever mentioned the grayscale thing, if you put your layer in grayscale and it and it looks good that way, uh, it looks balanced, like the dark shapes balance the lighter shapes, then it'll yeah. likely work yes. in color, is what I meant. But All right. Okay. So uh, would everyone else like to share a piece of their work to illustrate, like, you know, the relationship between, like, colors and values and whatnot? Because, sure. like, yeah, uh, going with Monica, if you'd like. Okay, I only got two pieces right here. Um, I think the best example of my more painterly style, this is an ad I did for uh, a local brewery. Uh, as you can see, I went very stylistic with this. I wanted to make it look like the feathers were moving. So I wanted to have a lot of motion in here. And um, as as you can see, um, I I used a, a very subdued palette for this. None of these are particularly bright colors. I had them sort of unified with the green. I have a technique where I put a layer of color over everything and and dim the opacity all the way down, just so it can sort of combine those characters mm. together. But yes, you can see I got the warm light coming in here from this side, and then I got these green shadows on the other side. Uh, we got the contrast of the warm and the cool. On that one. Uh, so it's actually like complementary colors working here, isn't it? Red and green. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I, yeah. The, I wanted the green to be a little crazy bright just add it and make it a little more fun and frenetic on that one. I but, see. Uh, yep, there's that one. And then this one I did, this is the burning of the boats from the Silmarillion. Wow. Here. And this That's was all done gorgeous. in just the original pencils for this were all grayscale because I wanted to get those light sources completely down. I wanted to make sure these guys in the front looked super dark. I wanted to make sure that Feanor was front and center, but to have other light sources with the boats in the background and everything. And I got the the purple for the shadows and the orange for the high orange yellow for the highlights on that one. But so so cool. if any of you guys have a panel that's just talking about Tolkien, invite me. Ditto. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> All right. That is amazing. Honestly, I am learning a lot from uh, everyone's explanation so far. I'm truly grateful. Heather, do you have any uh, works you'd like to show? Like, just um, uh, germane to this topic? <laughs> I, I have a couple. Um, I, I, most of them are, are, um, I have some comic book pages that I've done for one that I did here. Let me 
Yeah, please, please do. I yeah. Have to put this in the right place. Okay. Oh, I can share my second screen. Okay, <laughs> life is good. <laughs> oh, awesome. <laughs> Is, is it still loading? Okay. It says start. Still oh, oh, there it is. Yep, there ah. we go. Oh my goodness, work is, <laughs> works in progress. <laughs> exclusive, this this exclusive was a two page. Look. So, oh, so yeah, fun. you can see this. You guys can actually see my, my uh, Adobe Photoshop, right? It's not the yeah. other one. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. So, yeah, this was a. Um, a uh, two-page spread that I did for one of the comic books that my friend and I did. Um, it was one of those things where we just wanted it to be as fun and as colorful and kind of as crazy as we possibly could. So I tried to choose as many, you know, bright colors, but I still had to bring in, you know, some of the darker tones. And I'm, I, I'm not sure if I was quite as successful as I wanted to be, but at the same time, I'm still really proud of it. So, you know, <laughs> take that as you will. Love the corgi oh, chupacabra right. thing. Yeah, well, <laughs> or yes, yes, or something. <laughs> <laughs> that that there, there are that entire comic book was an Easter egg. <laughs> It was, it was Easter egg after Easter egg after Easter egg. I think we stopped somewhere around 42, 3, something like that. Wow. So, All yeah. Right. Um, okay. Here is another, um, but this is one that I was doing. Um, oh, a black and, and white so illustration. It was, I mean, obviously it's done in black and white, and I was working on... Um, how to do the different uh it, it's for a, a story i read that i really loved um mm -hmm. called blades of blood it's really not as bloody as it sounds i promise anyway um but yeah it's it was i was really this is the first time i actually really did anything with like half tones and other things like that and oh, i'm I positive see. that if i went back and colored it that i mean it would like you were saying monica that uh it would probably be a lot stronger once I did, but I'm I'm really yeah. So this is what grayscale you're can be strong too. I mean, exactly. sometimes all you need is grayscale and pop a one color. Um, <laughs> mm -hmm. All Hand right, jumper. <laughs> yeah, so it's okay. Right. Anyway, the, so the last thing. one I have is a. Uh, it was a, a commission I did for a steampunk convention, and so it was just the two of them. It was a husband and a wife, and. Um, they had the coolest wrong. costumes, and I was like, please let me draw your costumes. Yeah. It's very Bioshock vibes, Bioshock Infinite vibes. Yeah, yeah. Oh my goodness, yeah, yes. yes exactly. It is a compliment. Yeah, I love that game. I play it again. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah. Your right. foreshortening, think... the foreshortening you did on her arm is, is stellar. That's it's really hard to do. Well, I yeah, oh foreshortening goodness. is not That's... my strong point. I was very proud of that. <laughs> not gonna lie. <laughs> All right, cool. Oh, jumping jumping off of that, um, could I could I just inquire? Like, is there an aspect of art theory that you find that you still struggle even at your skill level? Uh, I'll start with Heather. <laughs> is there one I don't struggle with? <laughs> That's probably a better question. <laughs> I think I'm joking. I mean, I swear there are times I'll just, you know, sit down and start drawing and I'll be like, oh, yay, I'm sitting here with my, my lovely stylus and going along. And then I'm just like, this is really bad. Why is it bad? And then I'm like, oh, because I forgot everything. <laughs> I swear I do that so it's... often. But, You're not alone. Um... You're not alone. <laughs> <laughs> I think uh, Monica, how is have you? Thing, so. oh, oh, yeah, foreshortening. Oh, for sure. Like Monica, how have you struggled? Um. Well, yeah. Like like Heather says, if you don't use it, you lose it. It's something you just have to keep up all the time, and even when it sucks, you still have to keep going and still working on it. And the, that's really hard with a web comic because True. sometimes you're just gonna have a page that's terrible, but you gotta finish it because it's gotta go oh, up. Yeah. But, yeah, it is um, true. So yeah, oh, staying yes. consistent non-model is a big one for me. The other one is backgrounds and perspective. They are my they are anathema to me and they are something I still struggle with. Like I don't think my 
brain can see some of those things very well. I don't know. I can't explain it any other way. Some people are like, I can't do faces. Me, I can't see buildings and backgrounds. They're just blobs to me. So sometimes I'll even cheat and just put geometric shapes in the background and blur them. But um, often I'll just have to get a photo. That's valid. Screen. That's a trick. That's a trick. Sometimes, <laughs> yeah. Or or I'll put in a pattern background and just forget the whole thing. But um, <laughs> honestly, uh, if I really want to get that pa background done, I, I have to get a photo reference or if it's like inside a room, I will, or uh, the front of a building, I will create it in Sims so I can see it from every angle. And so mm -hmm. I know where everything is. I go to Sims 4 and I make a house yeah. for stuff. I have to make a mansion yeah. now for Budlington Manor for Skeleton Crew. I'm just, ugh, I don't want to, but I got to. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much for sharing. Uh, Lauren, would you like to add on to what uh, you personally struggle with? Um, lately I've been trying to get a consistent process. Typically I do like, you know, crude thumbnails, uh, more of a sketch then from sketch to the colors and then color to the finish. Uh, that is not seamless. I would like it to be seamless. I don't know if it ever will be, but <laughs> yeah, particularly from sketches to, you know, having it look mostly finish between from that to that it's a lot of um swearing and frustration and etc you know chocolate eating etc <laughs> but i would like to put that more down uh over time but i'm sure then i'll find some i i have a theory that once you solve one problem there's another one to figure out you just keep aiming it's like patching code. It really is. <laughs> yes, that is a that is actually a really apt comparison. <laughs> All right. Okay. Uh, I think we can move on to the digital art tool section of the talk. So, what is the easiest way for an artist to familiarize themselves with tools of an art program? Starting with maybe Monica. Um, honestly, your best bet is to, to look up tutorials. Um, that's what I had to do when I had to finally get out of my sort of cell st shaded style and start figuring out how to make things look more realistic and more 3D. I went to Pinterest. I went on YouTube. I used uh, the resources that Adobe gives you with the Photoshop app. And I just started looking at lessons on how I can improve my craft, including brushes to download and um, do's and don'ts and just I'm still learning. I'm still learning and I still look up these videos and stuff. And, but it's mm -hmm. um it's, it's worth doing if you have the time. All right. Okay. Then uh how how about if what are some of the hidden features of your art program that you use often but other artists don't know that they exist? Um uh, I'll just yeah, I'll, it's a follow up. Yeah, okay, that's fair. Um uh I I, I look for brushes, honestly. I, I ask my friends, hey, do you got any good brushes? You know, the, 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 go to the, the, the brush warehouse at the market and I trade it with my friend. No, um, they'll email each other files. Um, my company will have a big database full of brushes. If anyone comes across anything new, we'll stick it in there and we'll try it out. The next meeting, we'll discuss it and say what we like about it, what we don't like about it. Um, I can't think of any particular website that I use except for Chalky. Talky is a good resource for that one. Um, honestly, it's just getting your hands dirty and playing with all the brushes you find and seeing what you get. All right. Uh, could you spell Chalky? I'm sorry. And let me. S I will look it up and make sure that's actually what it's called. Hang on. <laughs> and then okay, meanwhile, the... I'll put it. I'll put it in the chat and. While, while all right. Someone else in answer. The, yeah. In the meantime, I'll lead up with uh, Lauren. Do you? Uh, what are some? Like, you know, like, how have you familiarized and what are some hidden features of your art program that you use often, but people don't know they exist? Um, well, I, to familiarize yourself with it, um, like I'm trying to, I, I know Photoshop now and I'm trying to familiarize myself with painter, but 1 of the ways I'm doing that is, um, when you 1st, learn a program, you're not going to immediately good at it. So I, I set aside, like a few hours a week to do one exercise in it um and just you know familiarize myself with the program try different brushes try to different approaches so there's no pressure on it and you're not spending all week doing it 
I'll let you do a bit at a time. Um, mm-hmm. In terms of something that uh, I wish I was told sooner, but I didn't find till later, I'm not as light handed of a painter slash drawer as I wish I was. I'm heavy footed, heavy handed, heavy. Um, so I, you, you can adjust that on whatever you work on. You could adjust that in terms of the pressure sensitivity. And uh, I got told by a teacher one time that another thing is, uh, for me, it was easier when he said, go into your brush settings and turn the brush tip to an, actually, can I show by a tutorial? Yes, please. Yes. Okay, please cool. Please it's a lot easier than to try to explain what I was doing. Uh, share the screen. Which one? This one. All right. Is Photoshop open? Okay, that's one of my works in progress. Apologies. Um, thank you. Uh, do, do, do. All right. So with brushes, you go to window brushes. You choose one of my favorite ones, which is this one. Then you go here. Okay, the thing that um, I was told that was useful, I put the opacity on off and I keep flow on pen pressure. And on shape dynamics, I put it on pen tilt. And, you know, flow opacity is how um, transparent your paint is. No, what was it? The difference between opacity and flow. Um, I guess the lesson I learned from opacity and flow that worked for me was that it, um, or that you shouldn't adjust opacity unless you have to, and adjusting flow is a better idea. All right. Okay. Right. Uh, but that was one of my, you know, it helps my work a lot. All right. There you go. Okay. <laughs> uh, Heather, would you like to add on to what you learned? We are actually running a bit short on time already <laughs> all right I, i'll hurry up um i use clip studio paint more often than mm. not and mm. um i mean i i use photoshop a lot because i grew up with it i know it a lot yeah. I, I think the best way that you can really get to know a program is to really just jump in and use it um and i know sometimes it can be really difficult to do when you don't have the money to buy programs but you can usually get a program to try and i would say try them you know download them and try them and cancel them if you can't but um when i was in clip studio paint i came across uh i i watch channels that will give you tutorials tips trainings um just sometimes watching people draw on them and that really helps because that way just new little things come up as other people div- um, discover things. Um, so yeah, in the Clip Studio Paint, there is a vector layer line. And once you do that, there was, a, it, once you actually put the vector layer, let's see. Um, oh, yes. It, I, I, will, I will go ahead and share if you don't mind. Yes, yes, please. No, okay. please do, please do. Okay. I will, I will try and hurry with this. Okay. So, um, you guys see it? No. Oh, no. Try it again. Yeah. It's not, it's not just, it's just not popping up for some reason. It might not work on some programs. Oh yeah. Mm. Oh, that's off. Oh, oh, there we go. Yeah. Oh, there it is. Okay. Yay. Yay. Okay. So. What we do here is, um, so I have this that I'm I'm working on. And over here, you can see there's a little box on this layer. And if you come up to the top, there's a, this is a new layer, and then you have the new vector layer. And when you draw on a vector layer, let's see, it can't work for me. It doesn't want to work for me. It's being slow because of course it is. Okay, so, you know, that's not the shape that you want, but then you can come over here to the vector layer line and um, grab this pinch tool and you can just kind of move it as you want, which oh, I think like if Illustrator was cool. cool. <laughs> exactly. <Which craft? laughs> um, and so over here uh, on the left-hand side, um, if you can see where my mouse is, 
uh, you can, you know, make it so that the, it only takes one or two points uh, whenever you pinch it, or you can take it much, much bigger. Yeah, I um, but once you do that, you can, yes. yeah, you can yeah. start using this line and you just, you put it down and you can start figuring out where it all goes and then you change your anchor points and you're good. Well, oh my so, goodness. Uh, it's just, it, it really, I, I was just kind of staring at this guy in shock because I'm like, holy cow, things like this exist? Yeah. <laughs> I, I'm, a Clip Studio, I'm a fellow Clip Studio Paint user and this is, I I feel like a fool. <laughs> right? Her That's tales I felt of the magical time. vector <laughs> program. Yeah. I look, right? I look oh forward to investigating goodness. Okay. And I'm actually uh, looking for the tutorial right now. I thought I had it under my bookmarks, but for some reason it's not there and I'm very upset. So oh, it's <laughs> I, okay. will find uh, it and I will get it in the chat. Yeah, yeah, you'll put it in the WebEx chat. Yes, thank you so much. Uh, with that, I think we should open it. Uh, we should open it up to audience Q&A now. So yeah. Okay, there is a question. Do any of you use 3D to support your 2D work? And any tips, if so, I suppose I'll start with Monica. Um, no, I'm old. I never learned how to use the 3D tool on Photoshop. I look forward to learning one of these days. I'm actually trying to teach myself Blender and maybe I'll understand some more of how 3D oh. stuff works, cause, but I haven't used 3D programs for 20 years. I have a lot of catching up to do and now I have time to do it. So maybe in the future. All right. Okay. Uh, Heather, would you like to add on? Because I know that Clip Studio has a 3D modeler uh, function. It does. Clip Studio's 3D modeler and I don't get along. <laughs> but there are some really great, um, like online, you can do some free poser um, software and programs. You can honestly look it up and there's uh, there's a list that comes up that says nine of uh, free posing software that you can get. One of them is an app for your phone, and I've been trying to figure that out lately. I can't recommend it yet because I haven't figured it out, and so I don't know if I'm going to be able to or not, but I have mm. been looking into it. And um, oh. But there are some really, really great ones out there, and if not, my usual go-to is just I'll go to DeviantArt, and I'll just look up a, a random pose or you know uh, anything in, that i want to particularly look at if i want to dress mm. or if i want to flying or if i want you know i'll try and yeah, figure I'll out play. what i want oh yeah. my goodness uh, yep it's from she send she stock oh she stock oh. is amazing yeah love her <laughs> she's awesome all right okay um lauren would you like to add on to that have you used 3d progress before uh, I tried, um, 360 anatomy is another one that, uh, is basically a 3d generated head that you can rotate and adjust the lighting, um, and different heads that you can buy for what, whatever model. Um, I personally didn't find that super useful for me because, um, I, I more prefer to do what you guys do in the sense of getting a pose, but I, um, an artist that I know who's super nice and uses 3D blenders a lot, actually two of them in particular, uh, Andrew Sides and Ben Hill, and their work still looks like painting, but they use Blender to support it. And they might have some tutorials on their website. I'm not sure, but they, they're they very good at what they do. I'll type their names in the chat. All right, thank you so much. Okay, with that, we are very much almost out of time. So in um, what is the main message in the sentence that you would like the audience to take away from uh, starting with Heather? Don't be afraid. Just do it. You can. Even if it's just <laughs> um, stick figures, do it anyway. All right. Okay, Monica? Uh, give yourself a challenge where you draw something every day, especially if it's something that bothers you, like do a month where you draw a hand every day or do a month where you draw perspective every day. Just if just even 30 days of drawing the one thing that really bugs you the most, even just little sketches can help you prove vastly and use photo and use real life reference, not photos. All right. Okay. Um, Lauren. Uh, 
make a lot of friends who do the thing you want to be doing so you can ask them questions too. Good. And that you be my friend Lauren. Oh. <laughs> Only if you could also be friends with my cat. I post way too many pictures of them. That's fine. Yeah, yeah. You're, you're talking you else. Too I many love pictures them. of your cat. <laughs> <laughs> um, but okay. that's one of the most valuable things, especially during the pandemic, to be able to email people and be like, I'm stuck on this, help me. And it's been nice. All right. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you, thank you so much, everyone. Uh, now, if everyone would just like to leave their um, like, like a website that people can contact you or like a portfolio, that would be great. Then I can put it in the chat and we can end the panel. Okay. Okay. So. All right. Okay, everyone. Uh, to everyone who is keeping up in the chat. Uh, this um, is Lauren's uh, our website. You can email her like via the email on her website. And oh, oh, okay. And this is Heather's Deviant Art. Uh, I presume we can contact you via uh, Deviant Art or something yeah. like that. Yeah. You should All be right. able to. Whether I will Are answer or not, I can see it. Ah, uh, uh, okay. All right. No problem. Okay. <laughs> All right, and this is Monica's. Behance is my portfolio. And oh, all right. Yeah. yeah, it's her portfolio. You can check out her webcomics, um, Skeleton Crew and Crit with an exclamation mark. <laughs> Attentionartist.com. <All right>. <laughs> yes. Oh, yeah. And... If you want, if you want my uh, webtoon, you just you can just search for H A Camp on Canvas on webtoons. Mm -hmm. H A camp, uh, like is there? Okay, like oh, right oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, Crit and Skeleton Crew are also on webtoons. Good. All right. Oh, okay, okay. All right. With that in mind, um, thank you very much, everyone. Thank you so much. Uh, I will probably end the chat now. Yeah. Okay. So nice to meet you all. Bye, everybody. It was great. Thank, thank you. So, thank you so so much for your knowledge. Thank you so much. It thank you, Jamie, for being a great host. Yeah. Oh, I thank you. Thank you. I try thank my you. best. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much. See, hopefully correspond, you know, later soon. Uh, stay in touch, guys. Yeah, stay there in you touch. Go. Bye.